Welcome back. Do you remember that little Chinese Max 31 855K breakout board and its quirky behavior? The general internet wisdom is if you have such a board and it exhibits a certain kind of failure, that is the first few bits of the thermocouple temperature seem to be yeah, stuck at fixed values, then your board has probably a fake chip on it. I made a whole video about that, yeah, card here, link in the description. But back then I only had for comparison a picture from a SparkFun board with the Max 31 855K on it. Now I have some real engineering samples from Maxim Integrated so we can make some proper comparisons. If we have a look at both chips under the microscope, they look very, very similar. The markings, the structure of the marking is the same. The ink of the one on the breakout board is a little bit different than the ink of the engineering sample. It reflects the light at a little bit different angle. But that could be just, yeah, another ink and or another machine doing the stamping here. Otherwise, they are virtually identical. And if you compare the engineering sample to the chip on the SparkFun breakout board, uh, I only had a photo of it, they are totally different. So, this is pretty much inconclusive. So I cobbled together a little breakout board with the engineering sample and it should have exactly the same circuit as the Chinese breakout board. The Max 31855 with a decoupling capacitor across VCC and ground, a terminal block connected to the thermocouple inputs, and a 5-pin pin header for the connections to the breadboard. That's all. I'm <laughs> kinda at a loss of words because my breakout board with the engineering sample directly from Maxim exhibits exactly the same behavior as the Chinese breakout board. And yeah, I put in here some clip from my previous video where you see the readings from the <laughs> Chinese breakout board. And please note that the thermocouple temperature is, uh, yeah, way off minus uh, 100 something degrees. Um, switching over, um, I'm back now, <laughs> uh, to the board with the Maxim engineering sample, you also see it's minus 100 something degrees Celsius. So it's not the chip, okay? It's not the chip. Just looking at the typical application circuit within the Max31855 datasheet, neither the Chinese nor I have done anything wrong. Decoupling capacitor between VCC and ground, the thermocouple connections and the digital connections to the microcontroller. There's nothing else to it. Or so I thought, because on page 11 of 13, we find this noise consideration. Yeah, the effects of power supply noise can be minimized by placing a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor close to the VCC pin of the device and to ground. Yeah, we've done that. But then further down, it is strongly recommended to add a 10 nanofarad ceramic surface mount differential capacitor placed across the T plus and T minus pins, so your thermocouple connections, in order to filter noise on the thermocouple lines. Ah. I don't have any surface mount 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitors handy. So I squeezed in here a 10 nanofarad through hole 
ceramic capacitor, as close to the thermocouple pins of the chip as I could. Let's see how that works out. And in fact, <laughs> that works just fine. Just yeah, look at the temperature of the thermocouple. The readings are perfectly realistic and yeah, if I touch the thermocouple and try to heat it up a little bit, yeah, temperature is coming up. No problem at all. <laughs> Let's try that with the Chinese module. I modified the Chinese breakout board too, but I got a bit lazy and just soldered the 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitor. Uh, on the pins of the terminal block. Let's see if that is enough. And as you can see on the left, the thermocouple temperature readings are just fine. So these Chinese breakout boards are really just missing a strongly recommended <laughs> filter capacitor on the thermocouple input. And yeah, uh, it's really measuring a temperature. I can heat up that thermocouple a little bit and the temperature is rising. Yeah. So, conclusions. First, read your data sheets to the very last page or in our case here at least to uh, yeah, <laughs> page 11 of 13. Second, don't believe anything you read on the internet, even if it's in threads of pretty reputable discussion boards, unless you cross-checked it, for example, with a data sheet. In the first video, I mentioned at least three threads on message boards, and I linked them in the description of that video, that talked about exactly the malfunction I experienced and they said it's fake chips. Even at least in one thread described the error down to the bit level exactly like I experienced it. And they were wrong. It's not the chip, it's just the missing capacitor. So I will unlist that first video because I don't want to spread false information here on the interweb, uh, specifically YouTube. But it will be still available through a link in the description and at the start of this video there was already a card. I just want to make sure that people first see this video with the truth before watching that other video and how I came to a wrong conclusion, trusting the internet. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for now. And by the way, I have still that Ovon power supply sitting here on the bench and every now and then I switch it on just to see if the display comes back to life. But obviously, yeah, it doesn't, it seems to be dead for good. Uh, cards or card about that and link or links about that uh, in the description. Till next time, bye.